Bags down, spikes on, welcome to the track. Hi, my name is Colin Waitzman, and I'm going to be your host for this episode of Track World News, presented by Track Barn. And today we have a ton to talk about. We're breaking out all of the things that happened at the NCAA Championship. So if you don't want to miss it, we're talking about Florida's dominance, Joseph Fambule going absolutely crazy, uh, RG3 joining the booth and what that means for the future of track and field, and why the women's Bowerman race is the tightest race we've ever seen, ever. Before we go any further, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Manscaped. As track athletes, we're gonna be running tons of miles every week and can be really sweaty and gross after a hard day of practice, but those days are behind us. Manscaped just sent me their brand new performance package, which comes with the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, weed whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer, crop preserver ball deodorant, crop reviver toner, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag to hold all your goodies. Look, I've tried a lot of razors in my day, but the Lawnmower 4.0 is just different. Its ceramic blade helps reduce grooming accidents. LED light allows you to shave anytime, anywhere. And since it's waterproof, you can even take it in the shower if you want. When shopping with Manscaped, use code TWN at checkout to get 20% off your entire order, plus free shipping worldwide. Show up to your next meet looking good. If you want to be the best, you got to look the best. Link is in the description. And now back to the video. Don't miss that. Before you do, make sure you leave a like, subscribe, comment. It really helps us know that you're enjoying the show. And uh, let's jump right into it. So Florida has been absolutely crazy uh, this past few years. So uh, obviously they win the national championship for both the men and the women. On the women's side, they scored 74 points to win the national championship. Texas comes in second with 64. Kentucky comes in third with 50. And then Texas A&M and LSU tie for fourth place with 39 points. On the men's side, the men of Florida score 54 points. Texas comes in second again with 38 points. Uh, Tennessee comes in third with 34 points. And then Florida State University round out your top four, scoring 33 points. And so it's very interesting how both of these teams did it. They did their championship run in very different and unique ways. On the men's side, it was sprints everywhere. I don't think they scored a single point outside of the sprints. So they scored in the, you know, the 100, the 200, the four by one, the four by four, uh, and the 400. And so th that's how they won. They were sprints dominant, uh, on the women's side, a lot more, you know, different types of scoring they had. They had, you know, the 400 long jump, triple jump, uh, 400 hurdles, uh, heptathlon, you know, they scored a wide variety of ways uh, when it came to the women's side for how they ended up ended up getting the championship. So it's just interesting seeing how both of these teams, while they won a national championship, their road to the national title was very, very different. And I think this also solidifies uh, Coach Holloway as one of the best coaches we've ever seen uh, when it comes to college track and field. I mean, this man has produced time and time again, not only at the collegiate level, but developing the athletes that go to the collegiate level to being stellar performers when it comes to the professional ranks. Obviously, uh, Grant Holloway is, is a big time name when you're looking at sprinters right now. You know, you have Fambule uh, on the jumping side. You know, there's the, the Jasmine Moores, Anna Hall, like um, Marquise Dendy, you know, from years past, Christian Taylor, Will Clay, like there's been all of these names that have came through the the Florida sprinting program, the Florida uh, just running program. I know he's he's also trained, um, you know, many many of the greats, and so uh, this definitely is solidifying him as you know the, the go one of the go to guys when it comes to to college sprinting uh, at the very least. Uh, the NCAA championship is the best track meet in the entire world, it, and this is why it is. So unlike any other meet that you have. There is more drama and there is more storylines and better competition. So 
people then would say, oh, what about the Olympics? What about the world championships? You're right. Like the world championships and the Olympics have better talent performing. Like they're all of those athletes or majority of those athletes are professional runners, they're professional jumpers, they're professional throwers. It's what they do for a living. And so you're going to see better marks on average when you watch an Olympic event or a world championship event. That's true. But that's about where things kind of end because you don't get these storylines that build up over the course of a year. You don't get these uh, this drama of who's going to be coming out with the most amount of points by the end of the meet. Uh, you don't get all of these things that are, are nuances and make a track meet even better because that's what kind of sells it. Let's look at the women's side, for example. Uh, so in the women's 200 and 100, we had a storyline that has been building up this entire season, not only this indoor outdoor season, but this indoor season as well, when it came to Abby Steiner versus Favre Ophelia. You know, these two women have been going back at it, trading national records every single meet. There's been drama and tension and, and they've been so close. Their PRs were so close. Their season bests were so close. The times, the championships they had won, everything was so close. And so that's what made this outdoor 200 meters even more exciting than it would have been. I mean, I was doing a watch party. Many of you all were joining and thank you if you did. We were doing some co-commentating, had some celebrity guests as well. It was a great time. And, and when we were watching the Women's 200, that was the event that had the most viewers by far. It wasn't even close. And so everyone wanted to tune in to see who was gonna end up winning this because it had that drama that everyone wanted to see who's gonna end up getting this, this lean. Because if it was just the one-time race, it's just these athletes competed for the first time at the championship games or, or at the, the world championships or at nationals, there's just not that amount of tension. Uh, like, cause we don't see that in the pros. Many of the best professional athletes do not compete against each other. But otherwise, like not, there's like, it doesn't happen very often where you're going to be seeing these uh, champions going head to head throughout the year. You see that in college track and that's why I kind of like it better. You also have the team aspect of things. Who's gonna score the most amount of points? Because now athletes are doing things to better the team, not just better themselves. An excellent example is Anna Hall. So Anna Hall, she, if she wanted to, she could have broken the national record for the heptathlon easy. It wouldn't have even been remotely close. She had a, an, an easy opportunity where she could have just done that event, run a 211, which she is more than capable of doing, get a national record and then keep moving. But she didn't do that. She wanted to score the most amount of points to help her team win a national title. So what she did was she competed in the 400 meter hurdles 20 minutes before she had to run the 800, which was the final event of the heptathlon. She was in the middle of competing all of these events and threw in another thing, came in second place, knowing going into that race that it is going to mean almost certainly that she will not break the national record for the heptathlon. And so she sacrificed personal gain in order to have team glory. And that is something that I really care about and made it really, really exciting for me. It's also cool as you see the points add up and you see, oh, this team's ahead of this team, this team's ahead of that team. And then when it gets to those final races, they mean even more. We saw on the men's side, you know, the, the 5K, Florida State knew if they could go one, two, they have a chance of winning this thing. So they went all out, they, they went after it. It didn't end up working, but you saw them go after it. Uh, on, on the women's side, you're seeing uh, Florida, the, they had the 800 meter runner. All she had to do was score one point. She goes in there, tries to take the lead to guarantee that that team has clinched the title. And so it's like these races mean a little bit more than if it's just an individual or just a pro athlete. And so that's why the NCAA championship is a better meet than any other meet that's out there. Sure, you could see better quote unquote, comp like quote unquote uh, times elsewhere. You can go watch a professional meet and see faster times. But I would rather see races that have this extra meeting and better storylines. So that's why the NCAA championship is the best meet out there. I mean, you also had 
RG3 joining today. So uh, this past weekend, RG3 joins the the booth. You know, if you don't know who that is, he's a football player. He went to Baylor. He won the Rookie of the Year when he played for the the Washington, uh, what was then known as the Washington Redskins. Uh, he won the Rookie of the Year. He had some knee injuries, so he was really never competed at the top level when it came to a, a football aspect. But he is uh, from the NFL. But he is now a an announcer. He was also a 400 meter hurdler uh, and 100 meter hurdler when he was at Baylor. He came in third at nationals and he qualified for the Olympic trials when he was a freshman in college. And so he joined the booth uh, and he brought some much needed excitement when it came to this thing. Uh, it, he was really funny. I mean, he was talking about, uh, you know, that uh, he called the, uh, what's it called? Matthew Bowling, the Eminem of track and field or saying this runner, she needs to be laid back like her edges. Like just having these funny things that we don't get from other athletes. Like he brought that humor that you'll see much more often in an NFL broadcast he brought that to the national championship broadcast and so I'm hoping that the ESPN uh, users keep him at every major championship they could have he should be announcing SECs he should be announcing uh, national championships and hopefully they can get more track meets on ESPN so that he can do it um, for those asking if he could do the Olympics or the world championships or or USA's those are broadcasted on NBC and it think I believe he is an ESPN exclusive commentator so he wouldn't be able to commentate at those meets but uh he'd be more than happy to do more espn ones so i'm hoping that you know kind of gets that that thing going there maybe we could see him on some american track league events you know you never know but uh yeah so amazing production i really enjoyed it uh overall and glad to see rg3 coming out and and liking uh to be a part of the the, the conversation now let's go back to the florida teams that how the how they got here so the big story of the day is obviously going to be uh joseph fambule so fambule he goes in and he doubles so he wins the 100 and he wins the 200 and then he also was the anchor on that four by one team that came in second and he had three really amazing races. He put it all together when it mattered the most. Uh, and so what he was doing in the 100, he got a little bit of a better start than he normally does. You know, everyone kind of criticizes him saying, oh, you have a bad start, blah, 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 blah. But if you look at the race here, his start in the 100 wasn't that bad. And it was a really, really close race. I mean, one thing that was really funny after the race uh, in an interview, he says, hey, if it's even, I'm leaving. And so you have to be so far ahead of Joseph Fambule because you know his closeout speed is going to be massive. And so, like he said in his quote, if it's even, I'm leaving. And that's what he did. Uh, he got out and he was just a little bit behind the group. And then he ends up pulling away at the last second to get the win uh, where he ran a time of 10.00, a new personal best. And so the story, another storyline out of that 100 was uh, Michael Williams. So obviously going into this race, Michael Williams was the best, or Makai Williams, sorry, Makai Williams. He was the number one seed coming into the, the championship. He had ran a 986 and a nine, a windy 983. And so he was the person that, you know, in my book, I had him as a national champion in pretty much everyone else's books had him as a national champion. And um, he doesn't show up uh, and, and perform as he would like to. Uh, he ends up running a, he comes in seventh place uh, and gets beat by, you know, a, a few, a good amount of people there. And he, he really never had that separation that he normally does. I mean, his start is usually really good. And when we saw that he didn't have a lead on the team, he was actually kind of right in the middle. It looked like he was in second or, or third place like this entire time. Uh, like the through that first 50 meters or so, I was like, ma'am, this doesn't look good because Fambule's close is so stellar and you're just even with him. I don't see a way that, you know, a guy that has a really good start didn't get the best start and then beating a guy whose closeout speed is top tier. So uh, he ended up coming in second place. Um, feel bad for him. I think it was a, it was a mental thing, you know, uh, when you're competing at these types of high levels and you now have that pressure on you, you know, that, that can build. I mean, he, he's went from being a guy last year, making the Olympic team, uh, you know, being that, that fourth leg 
to, uh, you know, not many people knowing uh, who you are outside of the NCAA championship to being now you're the second fastest guy in the world. Uh, and you're, you have expectations that come with that. And so I think that pressure, you know, built up for him, you know, which is fine. I mean, it, it happens to me, it happens to everyone, you know, sometimes the pressure becomes a lot when you're, you go from, you know, not having, you go from being the underdog to being the favorite. I mean, I, I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan. We went from being, you know, the underdogs winning the Super Bowl to next year being the favorites and, and not performing how, how we wanted to. So, you know, that, that happens, you know, you're, you can go into a race being the favorite, being at home, and then, you know, your heart's beating a million miles a minute and things just don't execute, you just don't execute the way that you want. Uh, feel bad for him. I'm sure he's probably, you know, kicking himself about it. Uh, so don't want to dwell on it too much, but uh, that was definitely one of the storylines that, that you got to take out of this one uh, for sure. Going back to Joseph Fambule, he also wins in the 200. Uh, it was really going to be not even a debate for him. Once we saw that he won the 100 meter dash, it was almost like locked that he, he was going to end up winning in the two. Uh, so uh, he wins in the 200 uh, with a time of 19.83. Um, once again, he had a pretty good comeback um, that he normally does. His top end speed is just far superior than anyone else in the competition there. Uh, it was interesting because I was also at the New York City Grand Prix on Sunday and interviewed Noah Lyles. And he was talking about, yeah, once once I saw that, he won the 100. It really wasn't even a debate that I that he was going to win the two. I mean, he's he's just so fast. You know, he's he's got that confidence. He's got that ability to execute at a very high level that I just don't see him not winning it. And so that was something that was really interesting that we heard from you know one of the pros who was supposed to be committing to Florida. Um, also, after his his race, we see him. Uh, you know, this is Joseph Ambule. He picks up the phone and like pretends to call it. Uh, this was just like uh, Grant Holloway, who did that back in 2019 after he won the national championship in the 110 meter hurdles. And then we saw on Sunday, Noah Lyles did the same thing. So it looks like this might be a little trend that we could see going on with uh, with the sprinters. And I'm not mad at it one bit. Uh, so next, one of our, our final stories when it comes to the NCAA championship that I do want to talk about, and that's going to be just the closeness of the Bowerman for the women. So uh, we came out with our Bowerman predictions on Mon or Tuesday now. Uh, no, yeah, it was Monday. Sorry. <laughs> we came, came out with it on Monday. Today's Tuesday. And uh, so with it, the men's side, it was a little bit easier for me uh, for what I decided to pick. Uh, for those of you that didn't see it, we had Aiden Owens in first, Trey Cunningham in second. Um, who was it? Joseph Fambule third, um, Randolph Ross fourth, and then in our fifth position was Kyle Garland. So those were our, our top five for the men. I was feeling pretty good uh, about those, those picks. But on the women's side, oh man, the women's side is impossible to pick for the Bowerman. Like it, it really is. There are so many good ladies uh, on the side that really the top four should all be number one. And here, let me tell you why. So uh, Abby Steiner, she has the national record in the 200 indoors, national champion in the 200 as well. National champion in the 200 outdoors, as well as national record holder in the 200 outdoors as well. She comes in third in the 100 at the national championship with an 1108, and then she splits a 48 in the four by four for Kentucky. So that's her, she had an amazing season. Uh, Anna Hall, so she wins the pentathlon indoors and then the heptathlon outdoors. She had the fourth best pentathlon indoors and then she had the second best heptathlon outdoors. Uh, she also would have the best one if you adjust for new implements as well as wins. So if you take those into effect, she has the national record outdoors. Uh, on top of that, at the national championship, not only did she win uh, a national championship in the heptathlon, she also did that 400 meter hurdles right before her race, just 20 minutes before her race. And she got second place behind Britton Wilson. Uh, this is a brand new event for her. And she ended up running a 54 76. So just the ultimate team team player there. Uh, Jasmine Moore. So she went eight for eight. Uh, the only lady in this position that won eight out of eight titles. So she won the long jump and the triple jump at the SECs and in SECs indoors. 
NCAA Championship Indoors, SEC's Outdoors, and the National Championship Outdoors. She has just been on an absolute tear. On top of that, she also has the national record indoors where she has the top three jumps in the triple jump she did all this season. And then she's also fourth in the triple jump outdoors uh, when it comes to the record books. So she has just been truly, truly unbeatable. When it comes to the throws, we have another lady who should be in there, which is Cameron Rogers. She is the national record holder in the hammer throw with a throw of 77.67 meters. She won the national championship, obviously. She threw the national record at the national championship. And she has all top 10 times in the national champion or in NCAA in college. She has a top 10 best, best throws. Uh, and she did five of those throws this year, including the national record. And then I think it was, uh, what, fourth and seventh and eighth, something like that. Uh, maybe a few more, obviously, because she did five. But she has been proving to be the best, one of the best throwers we have ever seen. And so with those th those four ladies, I'm just having such a difficult idea of who actually is the best because they all have reasons that they should win this. Like if any of these four women win it, I'll be like, yep, that makes perfect sense. I can completely see a way that any of those four women can make it. Uh, obviously also Anna Hall is the American champion in the heptathlon where she, she won that uh, against professionals. So she's been like, it, there's just so many things and so many reasons why each of these ladies should win the, the Bowerman award, but it's like, I, I can't pick. And so I made my, my predictions. I said it was Jasmine Moore currently in first, Abby uh, currently in second, Anna Hall in third, in fourth I had Cameron Rogers, and then in fifth I had Julian Alfred, who is your national record holder in the 60, I believe second fastest in the 100 outdoors, uh, and she went undefeated in the 100 meters outdoors as well. So uh, it's just been super difficult to pick who it is that's going to be winning that, but they're all they're all deserving of it. It's just hard to, to make these picks, but hey, somebody's got to do it. So that was the, the NCAA championship. It was amazing. Like I said, NCAA championships is the best track meet. There are many other performances, obviously, that we saw, but you know, we, we can't go over every single one of them. Uh, some standouts we saw Trey Cunningham running a 13.00. Uh, just behind him was Eric Edwards, who gave him a challenge and, and gave him a push. Uh, Randolph Ross winning with the 44.13 or 44.16 and, and saying that it was a bad race, even though it was his second fastest race of all time, uh, which was uh which was really interesting and so uh talitha diggs coming in ranked 11th i uh, no eighth in the ncaa uh many people having her counted out and ending up doubling and returning as the outdoor national champion in the 400 uh setting a new pr with 49.99 there as well so NCAAs was amazing. I'm super sad that it's gone, but I'm looking forward to seeing what it's going to be indoors and outdoors and uh, keep an eye out. We will be doing some way too early predictions for that pretty soon as well. Uh, next, let's just talk about the pros for a little bit. So we don't have too much time uh, with what we're going to be talking about right now, but let's go on over to the NYC Grand Prix. So we have two performances or, or two athletes that we really want to discuss right now. And so first one has to be Devin Allen. So Devin Allen ends up running the third fastest time ever in the 100 meter hurdles or 110 meter hurdles with a time of 12.84. He ends up beating Grant Holloway, who is opening up his seat and ended up running a 13.06. And Devin was looking really good in this race. He was looking really smooth. Um, he was over the hurdles really quickly. He always finishes out well. And so the fact that Grant Holloway hadn't separated himself yet by the second half of the race, it was once again, similar to the men's 100 when we saw that at the national championship where it's like Michael Williams or Makai Williams, he starts very well. It doesn't look like he has separation yet. We know that there's an athlete that has really good top end speed. This is gonna be a close one. And so that's what it was with Devin Allen. He ends up pulling away, gets 1284, third fastest time ever. And after the race, he was like, I'm going for the world record. Like, Breaking world record today. Uh, I've been feeling it for about like six weeks. Uh, just some heavy legs because I was, you know, in Philly back and forth doing OTAs and, and trying to, you know, four days of football, Monday through Thursday, and then my off days were on the track Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I didn't really have any rest. Um, I got COVID 14 days ago. 
And so I, I took like 10 days off to recover from that, you know, and uh, so I have fresh legs, that's pretty much all that matters. My coach was like, hey, I think you're going to be fine, just relax. So tired and COVID equals your shape to Well, no, no, I think, you know, I think the COVID obviously is not good because your body is like trying to recover, but it was good for me to get off my feet for, you know, seven to 10 days. And so now it's like, does he have that legitimate chance of breaking the world record? Like, I think you have to put him in that conversation. He's only 0.4 off of being able to do it. Like a 1079, he could definitely do it. I mean, he, he's been mentioning since last year that his goal is to be a world champion and to break the world record. And so far, he has now put himself into that upper echelon where he is no longer, you know, a fringe 13 guy, you know, maybe a 1299. Like he has been showing this entire year. No, like I, I am a a threat to win this this year like i this isn't just you know something that i'm trying to you know finish out like no he, he is focusing in on track and field and he wants like yo let's go out with a bang he did mention he is con planning on continuing to run track and field so uh it's not like he is retiring from the sport here uh he mentioned that he you know will be continuing so we'll probably see him in summer meets after this you know trying to make usa teams and, and stuff like that it's just the focus will be slightly different because his training throughout the beginning of the year will be obviously for for football there so uh that was for Devin uh it was awesome seeing him do that and uh excited to see how this will continue for him as he goes forward uh with that and then the last story that I want to discuss also coming from the NYC Grand Prix is going to be Shakari Richardson so Shakari Richardson ends up coming in second in the 100 meter dash at uh, NYC Grand Prix. She runs a time of 10.84, no, sorry, 10.85, right behind Aaliyah Hobbs, who ran a 10.83. First time Aaliyah Hobbs has been sub 1090 since 2017. So she was feeling really good about that, finally being able to break that barrier again uh, since she was back in college. And then also in the 200 meter dash, Shakari Richardson won that as well with a time of 22.36. Uh, like I mentioned, I was at the meet, so we were able to get some interviews with her. Hey, you did great out there. I feel phenomenal. This only means like my third hundred of the season. Yeah. I feel fantastic. And my best, one of the people I idolize the most, I first, Leah Hobbs. I love her. If anybody wants to beat me, I would definitely want it to be Leah. <laughs> Um, off the track, there are two things that were really the main storylines for me uh, when it came to, to Shakari Richardson. So one, the fashion. So she had like a fishnet uh, bodysuit underneath it, like on her arms and on her legs. And it looked really cool. Like I think that she is bringing this new fashion era to track and field that we had lost since Flojo. Like we hadn't seen that type of fashion, that type of style since Flojo was doing it uh, a while back now. And, and it looks really cool. It's really nice. Uh, she's unique in her style. She, she had mentioned like, no, I'm gonna do me. This is what I wanna do. Uh, and it's interesting how all of these people complain about, oh my God, like all these uniforms are so, so the, like are so similar. I am one of those people, uh, you know, saying, oh my God, the uniform so similar but I don't like what she's doing it's too uh, it's too unique no 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 no. if you're gonna be in the uniforms or too similar party you cannot also be in the I am going to be criticizing Shakari party for the uniform she's wearing so pick a side it's either the uniforms are fine or they need to change and I like what she's doing with it let's let's not get in the middle of this type of thing uh also it was uh it was super cool to see just the drawl that her name has like when I was in I was in the mix zone right after she finishes a race, every single kid that was at that track meet was hounding her. It has Thank to be. You. <laughs> It was like, wow, this is like a real time celebrity. Like there were obviously people that, you know, other people that had draws and, and, you know, kids that wanted to get autographs as well. You know, Christian Coleman, a few kids, you know, kids were getting autographs. Uh, Sidney McLaughlin, kids wanted to see. Noah Lyles, kids wanted to see. Uh, it was actually really cool. Noah Lyles, uh, like these kids were asking for his spike. And so he was like, what's my PR time? Whoever can get my PR in the 200, I'll give you my spikes. And like the kids were like 20 point. And I was like, man, ain't nobody getting these spikes if you're going to start a, a PR for Noah Lyles with a 20 point. Uh, but yeah, he was giving out, he threw out his spikes to the crew, the crowd, making them run for it. And, you know, Gabby Thomas signing some pictures, Sidney McLaughlin. But no one had the draw that, that, that Shakari Richardson had. Like, 
there the kids were lining up before she even got there like everyone wanted to you know see her get these pictures and so it just shows like no matter how much people want to hate on her and no matter how much people want to say we don't need Shakira Richardson in track and you know where the track is going to be fine without her and all of that that's not the case like the people that are saying that Shakira Richardson you know is doing too much and we don't need it clearly have never seen her at a track meet because the draw that she has the celebrity she has the aura that she gives off is bar none and not only does she have this amazing aura about her and her personality, she's so kind and nice to these kids. Like she was spending a, an amount, an immense amount of time help, you know, signing autographs and pictures. Like, you know, there are pens that were out of ink. It was like, hey, who's got another pen? Like I need to, I need to get a, another pen to sign these autographs. Like taking all this time, like she could have easily been like, okay, I'm gonna sign a few things. Like, all right, I'm going, I'll see you later. Like, no, she was taking her time to do this. And and it was it was nice to see that, you know, she she's doing these things when, um, you know, you have hundreds of kids that are standing there for you, not for anyone else. They're there for you. And so that was something that was, that was really awesome to see. Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for us here with uh, track world news. It's going to be this episode. If you enjoyed it, leave a like comment, subscribe, helps us know that you're enjoying the content. We are so, so close to a thousand subscribers. We would really appreciate it. If you could hit that subscribe button, we're less than 200 away. Uh, so let's help us get that, get to that milestone, but, uh, that's going to do it from us here. Have a good one. Talk to you soon. Peace.